When it comes to food mascots, we all know Ronald McDonald and the Kool-Aid Man, but did you know that this guy on the front of every bag of goldfish crackers has himself a name? It's Finn. Yeah, he's that super cool guy with the sunglasses, but he doesn't even wear them. They just sit on top of his head because he's so cool. But not only is he super cool, he's also super evil. You heard me. Finn here is part of a dark conspiracy where he sells off his friends so he can get rich. They're the snack that smiles back, all while engaging in illegal goldfish trafficking. Never before has such a bland mascot had such spicy lore. I love his fishes because they're so delicious. As for me, I love fishes because they're so suspicious. Gotta go fishing for lore. Hello Internet, welcome to Food Theory, the channel that puts the crack into cracker. Believe it or not, but Pepperidge Farms' iconic goldfish crackers are not only the second highest selling cracker in the US, they're also the cheese cracker with the highest demand in the entire world. These things are so popular that they earn themselves up to a billion dollars in annual revenue, nearly half of Pepperidge Farms' entire yearly sales, with over 142 billion of these bite-sized fish produced every year. When you're talking stats like that, it is it is no wonder that they have themselves that iconic smile. Ironic, considering they didn't actually start smiling until 1997. And, like all the best brands that try to appeal to the youngs, they have themselves a hip, young, hashtag relatable mascot in the form of Finn, the giant floating goldfish. Let's be honest, what's not to love about this guy? He's got sunglasses and, um... And, uh, and, uh, well, he's got sunglasses. And that makes him the adequate amount of fun-loving and rule-breaking for all you kids. But I tell you, for as much as he appears a mere goldfish, in reality, this cracker is a shark. After looking across the entirety of the goldfish cannon, yeah, that is a real thing, the goldfish cannon, I can assure you that this fish cracker thing is a fish who's seen some things, who knows too much. Finn is cutthroat, he's self-interested, and he's in it for the big cheddar. Uh, not like actual cheese, he's already flavor blasted to the extreme. No, he's in it for the green cheddar, the cold hard cash. Oh sure, in commercials, Finn and his friends might be having fun on their whimsical adventures, but there is definitely something fishy afoot. Pun certainly intended. Originally invented in 1958 by Oscar J. Campbell at his family's biscuit factory in Switzerland, the fish were meant to be a birthday gift to his wife, who was born in the month of March. So he aptly shaped the crackers after the fish for her astrological sign, Pisces. It would take a full four years before goldfish would make their way to the US, and then it would be an additional four for them to finally get that iconic cheddar cheese flavor. But once that happened, the rest is history. They became a staple of pantries everywhere, even becoming a Thanksgiving mainstay for the famous American chef Julia Child. One thing that absolutely contributed to that success? Commercials. And you know what that means? Lore. Pepperidge Farm Farm first started airing commercials for Goldfish back in 1977. And let me just say that some of the choices they've made along the way have had some disturbing consequences. Consequences that'll finally come to fruition today. Finn, your days of carelessly flying over generic household sets are over. You're about to be cancelled. I'd encourage you to break out your ukulele, but you know, you, you don't have hands or arms or really any limbs with which to play it, so you just put that one aside. First things first, one thing we gotta get out of the way early here is that in the Goldfish commercial universe, or GCU, it's established that the goldfish themselves are alive. In the early days, they were simpler and mostly didn't talk. I see the fishes swimming. Oh, look, the pretzels winning. They're baked and not fried, that's right. Now see them in a new light. Then there was the era in the late 90s where the commercials didn't really feature any fish, but instead focused on the bad jingles. I love the fishes because they're so delicious. The ones that were mostly focused on today, though, started airing back in 2001, when the fish started to come to life within the real world, eventually leading to the introduction of Finn in the main speaking role. This is where we can see that the fish have the ability to communicate. That said, they're not the fastest guppies in the fishbowl. Despite Finn warning the group not to plow forward into danger, all the rest of the giggling idiots just rush into danger wanting to get snacked on. To avoid being eaten, let's start a goldfish protection program. No, 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 no! Over time, the supporting cast would also get fleshed out, showing us that they each had a unique personality, even going so far as to form communities and cultures. I'm Finn. Hey. Finn. Well, what kind of name is that, Irish? No, Cheddar. So, with all that context out of the way, let's start shifting over to the masterminds behind it all, Finn and his team. There's Brooke, the Parmesan goldfish and his presumed love interest, Gilbert, the hapless but endearing pretzel goldfish, and Extreme, formerly known as Fumbleton Von Stuffington. No, that is actually not a joke. Fumbleton is part of the Flavor Blasted line. Their adventures began back in 2006. Finn leaves his bag sitting on a young boy's nightstand only to go explore the unknown lands below the bed. There, he finds himself an entire 
entire society of these fish that go about their day playing games and setting up talent shows. We also see forgotten goldfish from other lands too. And by other lands, I mean other rooms in the house with their own distinct cultures. The goldfish in the pantry are a very regulated society with no fun permitted. That place was so dull. Everything had to be so proper and neat. No one was ever allowed to goof off or have any fun. The goldfish in the siblings' room have themselves a charming southern drawl and their own boogeyman in the form of a pet hamster. Sweet ride. I got it from a pal, Fuzzy Face. If there's anything else that I learned from these commercials is that the family that lives in this house is absolutely disgusting. Literally leaving food everywhere, all across the floor. Then again, I'm the guy who cooked my steak in a dryer. Who am I to judge? From there, they all go on a series of adventures, including a multi-episode story arc where they rescue Gilbert the Pretzel from an evil vacuum cleaner. The whole series spanned, get this, over 40 episodes. Even going so far as to have multiple choose-your-own-adventure-style videos where the fans could go to the website and explore different paths for all the characters. It is incredible the length that some of these marketing teams go to. And honestly, it was really fun. Really cute. At least it was, until I saw this. Hi, I'm Finn. Here on the set of Finn and Friends, our show is sponsored by Goldfish Crackers. They're always baked with wholesome stuff, like real cheese. A commercial that shows that this whole story is being filmed by real-life people, and that Finn and his gang are just the talent, the stars. Toy Story, this is not, my friends. Here, the humans and the fish are working together. And it quickly becomes apparent as he swims through the bowls of different goldfish crackers that he's well aware of what purpose his fellow goldfish are serving. They're always baked with wholesome stuff. Notice that when Finn talks, he never uses the word we, like we're always baked with good wholesome stuff. Instead, he's always using the word they. They are always baked with good wholesome stuff. He's talking about the goldfish that he's offering up to the humans of this world. He even addresses one of the bowls before he's conveniently whisked away by a production assistant to take him to his next shot. These guys are even made with whole grain. Finn then goes on his way to shoot and gives us this little factoid. Goldfish crackers are great, and they keep me working. Excuse me? They keep me working? That right there is an outright admission that he's selling his friends down the river for money. The lunatic dove headfirst into a bowl of the carcasses of his own people like a twisted Scrooge McDuck and left all his way to the bank. Now, obviously, I could just be overthinking all this. It's just one commercial after all, right? It's not like it's some sort of established pattern of behavior, so I had to go as far back back as I could to see if I could find other examples of Finn's dastardly scheme, and as luck would have it, I found some of his earliest appearances, all made before the Finn and Friends ever aired. Looks like Finn's been doing this racket for a while, sacrificing billions to, as he says, keep himself working. In this commercial, Finn tells the goldfish about the flavor blaster that'll make them super cheesy and irresistible. He shouts at them while telling them everything that'll happen if they step into the machine, and then, at the end of it, he says this. That's a flavor blaster! It makes us flavorific, so we'll get eaten! Jump! Crumified. So swim around it, okay? Did you notice how his voice just audibly dropped? Here it is again. So swim around it, okay? He whispers the part that'll keep him out of the flavor blaster. He whispers the part that'll keep him alive. That right there, that's the smoking gun. But one thing that's easy to overlook here is that Finn's the one showing them this machine. He's the one who brought him here. He's the one with all the knowledge. He's the one leading them to the tool of their own demise and then covering up how they can avoid it. And then as soon as they come out, they go straight into the bowl. And so what does Finn do? Warn them to get out of there because they're about to be eaten? Nope, he smiles before gleefully swimming away, hidden behind the bags that are now full of his friends. The guy's good. <laughs> I suspect that he knew that that was going to be the result. I mean, goldfish have themselves the memories of, well, goldfish. So Finn is just putting them in front of a super cool looking machine, knowing that they're going to forget anything he tells them, and they just dive right in. And I know, I know for all you ichthyologists out there slamming on your keyboard saying, Matt Pat, goldfish are actually shown to have a pretty good memory and can even be trained. Yeah, I know, which is exactly what we see Finn do in the follow-up commercial. Here, Finn once again knowingly leads his crew of innocent goldfish to a conveniently open jar of peanut butter, where he tells them to use the buddy system to stay safe. So what do all the goldfish do? They dive in and then clump up into delicious pears. But notice this, the jar has already got streaks in it. This isn't the first batch to have been led here. Finn has been here before. And who's the only fish that doesn't mindlessly slather himself in peanut butter and pair up with another? Why, of course, it's our good old friend Finn. It's official, my friends. He's a maniac. And he's been preying on the goldfish's instinct to keep a steady supply of victims to sell to his human overlords. Oh, but it gets worse. See, all we remember about these commercials is the one line from the jingle. It's the snack that smiles back goldfish. But let me tell you, there is so much else in this thing. It is not all happy tunes in the land of fish crackers. Listen to this. Goldfish smile because they don't have a clue that they'll be eaten. Hold on, I'm sorry. What? Goldfish smile because they don't have a clue they'll be eaten? How messed up is that? That one line right there shows a 100% 
percent that in this world goldfish do not actively want to get eaten and yet they're just diving headfirst into a snack bowl why well it just confirms our suspicion that the goldfish are being tricked and if you thought that that was the end of it it gets even worse a wholesome snack that smiles back until you bite their heads off i mean come on look at that sadistic monster just chomping down on those poor souls immediately followed by more sentient goldfish just swimming around being led by hold on is that the pretzel goldfish you mean gilbert who just so happens to be part of the crew alongside finn training the other fish to follow him blindly to their death really does bring new meaning to this line the guy's good <laughs> finn's entourage is learning from him training under him the other goldfish are clearly being tricked by the elite one percenters in their world led to dangerous devices that make them delicious and then poorly warned away from their impending threat and the evil cherry on top of this dark theme song is finn taunting a bowl of his helpless brethren waiting on the catering cart just to be devoured these guys are even made with whole grain right guys billions of small fish crackers doomed to smirk for all eternity till a hangry eight-year-old scarfs down an entire bag and ruins their appetite for dinner think about that the next time you see those smiling fish you're silencing hundreds of little voices led there by a sunglasses wearing cracker lambs for the slaughter all for his profit but hey that's just a theory a food theory bon appetit <laughs> And hey, if you're in the mood for more snack food, check out how Cheetos started as a food that was rejected for cow consumption, and so instead they started feeding it to us humans. That video is on screen right now, so make sure you take a big old bite out of it with your mouse or your finger or, you know, wherever you're watching from. Make sure you subscribe for more wacky food videos like this one, and as always, my friends, I'll see ya next week.